In this problem, we're going to be exploring the difference between instantaneous power and average power for an object. And so uh, the problem that we're going to be looking at specifically is a car that's accelerating from rest. And so a car with a mass of 1500 kilograms starts from rest and accelerates uniformly, which is to say at a constant acceleration, to 40 meters per second in 10 seconds. Assume that air resistance remains constant at 1000 newtons during this time and then we want to find the average power developed by the engine and also the instantaneous power output by the engine at exactly 10 seconds. And so what we're going to do here is calculate P average, which is P with a line over it, and also P instantaneous, which we just write as P, you know, with no, uh, with nothing on it. And P average is defined as being the force output by the vehicle times the average velocity, and P instantaneous is just the force times the instantaneous velocity. So the first thing we have to do is figure out the force that is produced by the car itself, because when you draw the free body diagram, there is more than one force being exerted. So let's just assume that the velocity of the car is to the right. And that means that there is a force due to the car, and this is the engine that the car, that the, uh, the force that the car's engine exerts. And then pointing in the opposite direction, there's the force due to air resistance. And I'd like to note that the force due to air resistance is assumed to be a constant at 1,000 newtons, but we know that this is not in fact true. The force due to air resistance changes over time um, as a function of the velocity, but we're ignoring that for the, for the purposes of this uh, uh, for the purposes of this problem. And so what we know is that the force produced by the car minus the force due to air resistance is equal to just the net force, so that is equal to the mass of the car times the acceleration of the car. And so, if we want to switch this around, we know that the force created by the car's engine is just equal to the force of air resistance plus mass times acceleration. And so, <clears throat> the acceleration is going to be the change in velocity over time, we know that it's constant, so we just know it's the change in velocity over time. And we know that at the end of 10 seconds, the car has reached 40 meters per second. So it's 40 meters per second divided by 10 seconds, and that is 4 meters per second squared. So, that's, uh, so we need to know that. So now that we know the acceleration, we can calculate the force produced by the car's engine. And we know that that is going to be F car is equal to F air, the force produced by the air resistance, plus mass times acceleration. And the force produced by the air resistance is assumed to be a constant thousand newtons, and again, that's an approximation, uh, plus 1,500 kilograms times four meters per second squared. And when you work that out, that is 7,000 newtons. And that is going to be constant over the excel, you know, over the time that the car is accelerating. So now, the next thing that we can do is calculate the average power. And we write down the average power as p bar. The the line above the p just means average, and that's going to be equal to the force produced by the car times the mean velocity of the car. And when we calculate the mean velocity of the car, or the average velocity of the car, that is just going to be delta S divided by delta T. So it's the mean, it's the change in displacement over the change in time. And so we can calculate delta S by going back to the kinematics equations. And that is going to be S naught plus V naught T plus one half A T squared. And this is over the full 10 seconds. Now, we say that the car starts from rest, and we're looking at the difference. So both of the, the first two terms are 0, so it's just 1 half at squared. And when we plug in a is 4 meters per second squared and t is 10 seconds, that gives us delta s of 200 meters. 
So what that means is the mean velocity is just 200 meters divided by 10 seconds, and so that's 20 meters per second. And a secondary way to do this would be to say that um, since the acceleration is constant, the mean velocity is just the velocity at the end plus the velocity at the beginning divided by 2, um, but we'll just do it this way. So now, um, for that mean velocity, the mean power is going to be equal to the force of the car times the mean velocity. And recall, the force produced by the car's engine is 7,000 newtons, so times the mean velocity is 20 meters per second. And so when we, uh, when we work this out, we get that it is 140,000 newtons times meters per second, and this is joules per second, or watts, the units are. And so uh, 1,000 watts is a kilowatt, so we can say that this is 140 kilowatts is the mean power produced by this car. Now, then the next thing that we can do is calculate the instantaneous power. And this is done at t equals 10 seconds. And so, if you recall, the definition for the instantaneous power is just the force at that moment times the instantaneous velocity. And so the force produced by the car is, again, 7,000 newtons, and the instantaneous velocity at 10 seconds is 40 meters per second. And so that is going to be 280,000 watts, or 280 kilowatts. And so let me just draw your attention to the fact that the average power up here is 140 kilowatts, and the instantaneous power at the end of 10 seconds when the car is still accelerating but reaching its peak speed is twice as much. And the reason for that is that the power, the instantaneous power, goes as the velocity. So as the velocity increases, your power also must increase. The power output to do that must also increase. And so um, it's a very strong function of velocity. So, you know, the power produced at the end is going to be much greater, when your velocity is high, is going to be much greater than the power produced at the beginning when the velocity is low. Thank you very much.